Walt Hehim from Georgia. How are you doing, Walt? Oh, very good. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Hello. I have here that you have an ultimate theory of infinity. Well, uh, yes, I'm actually, uh, uh, well, anyway, I am, uh, I am, I'm in the science community. Uh, my, actually, my main, um, main topic or, or what I've been, been doing for all my life is, uh, in, involving, uh, climate and climate change. But this is something totally different to be discussed, um, uh, in the realm of science or maybe pseudoscience, but I think it's, I think it's science. Um, and it involves cosmology and, uh, the Big Bang. And of course, the Big Bang has been associated with, uh, a lot of, uh, the theist or atheist uh, arguments over the last, uh, well, ever since the uh, theory has been discussed. But here's a, here's an, uh, well, it, it, this expounds on it, if you will. Okay. Um, well, I got to admit right off the bat that I, um, I don't have a lot of deep knowledge in, into uh, cosmology, especially early cosmology. Um, but I'd be interested to hear what you've got. Okay, <laughs> let's try this. All right, uh, try this as an argument for size or cosmological argument. Um, and first of all, let's let's go for a couple of definitions uh, for what I have here. Uh, the universe uh, is everything that can that came before and after the Big Bang in a closed finite system, like a. We're going to call it like a soap bubble, like a soap bubble theory. And the cosmos is everything that ever was, exists now, and ever will be. Okay. okay. So, all right, our universe is, a, let, let, let's say this. Right, our universe is an hourglass, but conceptualized an hourglass, like a very old, you know, hourglass with the sand going, going through it and that sort of thing. With the Big Bang appearing to occur out of nowhere, like sand falling from the top of part of the glass, from the perspective of us being located somewhere in the bottom part of the apparatus. And uh, all that came after the Big Bang is contained within the bottom of a protomatter funnel, where all we know appears and expands in this realm and spreads apart due to what I would call, have you heard of um, dark energy? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. This is a little different. Appears and expands in this realm, and it, it spreads apart due to the what we call I would call the positive, positive phase of dark energy. Uh, of course, current science can't detect anything at the top of the glass where matter came from or before the Big Bang, and also, of course, from our current perspective, no more sand, quote unquote, is coming from behind the aperture where the Big Bang took place. Okay. Also, for the sake of argument, argument, let's say that most matter on the edge of the universe breaks down to its smallest components after 100 trillion, year, trillion years from the point of the Big Bang, in which what I would call the negative phase of dark energy takes over or flips. And, uh, of course, uh, as far as the dark energy goes, that's the, that's, uh, for anybody listening, that's the, um, uh, that's the force that is spreading all the galaxies and everything apart faster and faster. Okay, okay. Uh, well, really, really quick here, because this is starting to go uh, way over my head. Um, like, help, help, yeah. the, the, help the pragmatist here, because this sounds fascinating as far as a different way and a perspective of looking at things, but where does this actually get us? What does this change if this is an actual model? How do I live my, like, how is it going to affect my my daily life and my understanding and uh, like, like where, where are we going with this? Why is it important to know this? Uh, we're, we're, we're going, uh, we're going, uh, going to where uh, we can, we can tell that we not, we can't really tell, but we're going to say that nothing, something did not really come out of uh, nothing. As far as the big bang goes, there was something behind it. And I would say that uh, as far as this, the whole cycle of this goes, it was a, um, this is just a theory, of course. It was a uh, uh, a black hole that could be that's light years across. So that's everything that had just been compounded down to be a, a black hole, and then all of a sudden that becomes a singularity because everything's crushing into one point, and then it just bursts into our realm as uh, the universe. That's where it's going. Once again, though, well, bring, so bring this back and make it important to me. Like, how does this really change? 
me and my understanding of of, of the science and the world as it applies you're, to you're, what's going on in life right, right now. Right, right. I mean, it sounds like it's not something to think about, but you know, where where's this actually getting? Okay, okay. you're a uh, you're you're an atheist, correct? I am. Okay, um, and you've had uh, arguments with theists say the theists saying. Well, uh, well, here we, we, we can tell that uh, everything was created because we have the Big Bang. And, and uh, the Big Bang, yeah, well, science, science looks back in time um, towards the point of creation, and that was the point of creation. So I'm suggesting that there would be an alternative to that in which it's, it's not really the point of creation because, because there was a, a point before that, and here's a, here's a, here's, Here's uh, maybe a plausible explanation of why there is no beginning. There's no beginning to time. There's just it just goes back and back and farther and farther, and, and, it, and it's circular. Sure, but without a way of really investigating this, I mean, this is just as speculative as anything else, right? Uh, yes, that that is, that is correct. There's there's okay. no way of the the only the only thing that I would point to is that. Uh, with, they, they're, people, uh, scientists are just now beginning to understand or, or try to understand what dark energy is. And because in nature there seems to be two of everything, like uh, in, in magnetism, the, the pole switch, uh, we have uh, uh, matter and antimatter. Uh, so uh, why couldn't there be another phase of uh, dark energy in which everything uh it, it's a force in which everything uh is drawn together just like gravity except stronger uh, i mean yeah, they're, they're, I, uh, I guess what i'm yeah. saying is if like this, is this mostly speculative at this point like have you really dug deep into have you brought this up with people who are actually in the know and said you know let's 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 talk about this tell me a little bit more about your understanding and then i'll share mine like what have you done as far as like no, this, no, this is this this is sort of my first foray into this. So I was kind of drawn, drawn well, you. I was uh, pointing to your show. So, yes, it is It is definitely, it's just all speculative at this point. Yes, can, you know, can, I, it, make, can yeah. I make the point? Can I make Please. the point very, very quickly that I, I get what you're doing and sometimes it is um, attractive to go down that um, that route of trying to answer someone's question of why is there nothing instead of, uh, why is there something instead of nothing? Can I just make the, the argument to you that right. stop, I, uh, sometimes, right. but funny, can, but I, can I just make, can I just finish there? Can I just make the argument that sometimes it's okay to say we don't know? That is a very powerful statement oh, yeah. to admit oh, yeah. that you don't know. In, in, it's fun to to make these um, these assertions of this is what could have happened. And I will put it to you that the um, the hourglass analogy that you're using is very very confusing, and it's probably not. Um, I, I would like for you to to go away and kind of simplify that down a little bit because. Um, when when you're talking to people like ourselves or when you're talking to people out in the streets and you're trying to get your ideas across, you want to be able to strip it back to the most basic thing that you're trying to say. Otherwise, a lot of people are just going to switch off. Um, a lot of what you said, I did follow the majority of it. I'm not a cosmologist. Um, but what I would say is just go away and, and think of how to to simplify what you're trying to say, because it will make it'll just it'll benefit you to have these conversations and uh, when people understand what you're talking about. But sometimes it is okay to say that you don't know. Right. Yeah, that's what I found right. useful rather than right. come up with other... discussion. Yeah. No, rather than come uh, up with additional alternatives, like, you know, that is probably the best answer is, you know, we just plain don't know. And even you said about your own theory, this is speculative there, you know, you don't have too much backing this up. But I do recommend if you are interested in this stuff, um, go find out more information from the people who are in the know and who, um, you know, who are science educators and who talk about this kind of stuff. It, I, it's interesting to talk about, but, you know, like I, we want to know what's actually there instead of just guessing as to what might be. Crappy, yeah, what else it, it, yeah it, it is the truth that we're after here. And so the best way for, for me is, um, or in my view, is to say, yes, we don't know until we are certain that we do know. And the best way of doing that is to explore the universe is to get the idea but to, to my mind um something instead of nothing is the wrong question that's the wrong question and if you allow yourself to go down that hole of what started the universe again it takes you in the wrong direction of what humanity is about it's not about how did we get here it's the fact that we are here 
how do we make it the best life and the best world and the best universe we possibly can make it and, and i think that's a, a a route that a lot of people fall down on they don't they get bogged down with these questions and trying to justify the fact that we are here to people who need a reason for us to be here oh sure sure definitely i've seen all the uh or a lot of the richard dawkins uh, videos if you've seen those uh yes, on yes. YouTube, I, I, yeah so this is just uh this was just what i was doing was just uh was trying to to be like a a fun exercise and discussing the plausibility of, of why did something come out of nothing? I mean, and, the, uh, no, it's problem, the anything to think about. It really is. The, the yeah. biggest, the biggest problem with that analogy, the idea of the, um, the only way or, or the way new universes um, are created is by the hourglass flipping back over through dark matter. Um, it, the only problem with that is, is the theist will always come back with the idea that someone needs to flip the thing over. When, when time runs out, somebody or something needs to be there. So you're, you're actually falling into your own trap, you know. So I, I would just uh, think yeah. about it a little bit clearer and, and, and try to, to communicate it a little bit better. Um, yeah. This is great, though. Yeah, and keep keep, keep engaging with us. Oh, like, sure. We'll give you some ways sure. to keep talking. Actually, to I, uh, uh, yeah, actually, to be honest, this was my first attempt at explaining this to anyone. No, so we super appreciate it. I, I am honored that, that you've chosen to, to bring this up with me. We got a bunch of callers on the docket, though, Walt, so we're going to uh, we're gonna get, let you go and move on to some other ones. But thank you very much for calling. Well, well, thank you, Walt. Thank you for so much. Thank you for so, so much for having me, okay? Of course. You're have awesome. a good night. All right. Thank you. Bye.